I know as a little child growing up in Manahiki, we used to play a lot in the water. And there are certain areas in our village of Tahunu used to be dry, but now, you know, it's underwater. Temperatures are unpredictable. Temperatures are rising and dropping. When you just look at images from the past, whether it be beaches and how much beaches we used to have back in the day here in the Cook Islands, and you look at it now, it's not what it used to be. You have a lot of old people that have seen a lot of changes within their lifetime. And when they say the same thing, you can be assured that it's a true change uh, with regards to climate. Manihiki is about four hours away from Rarotonga by plane. It really doesn't have four seasons or two seasons, it just has one season where right throughout the year it's, it's very, very hot. It's a coral atoll. We don't have any sealed roads and there are two villages with a lagoon in the middle. The population sits between 230 and 220 between the two villages. The lagoon in the middle is where we farm our black pearls. Well, pearl farming was introduced from Tahiti. In the 80s, pearl farming got established in Manihiki and was introduced also to other lagoons in uh, the northern group like Penryn and Rakahanga. So pearl farming used to be one of the key economic drivers for the country behind tourism. Um, it has since slipped a far way back. For the Cook Islands in particular, especially in our northern groups, we have a lot of low-lying atolls and they're the first to really experience the impacts of climate change with sea level rise. Droughts are getting worse these days, more intensified, and of course our storms that we're experiencing too um, are on the rise and increasing. We have an increase of coral bleaching. When coral reefs stress, they die. And you can think of climate change as the bully in the background intensifying those periods of drought, those periods of wet, and also the intensity of the cyclones. We had the worst cyclone in our history in Manihiki in 97, and that wiped out the, the, the pearl farming uh, infrastructure. The decline in the pearl industry started from then because some people didn't start up again. Now, if a similar cyclone strike Manihiki, I don't think the industry can recover from that. With climate change, we're also experiencing warmer waters, and these warmer waters will affect the growth of a pearl and the different seasons that they're used to in terms of farming. In the 80s and 90s, you were able to work on your oysters virtually year-round. In recent years, because of high temperatures in the lagoon, we've had nearly up to six months where we couldn't work our oysters. And that's a huge impact on our production. For some farmers who depend on their pearls to sell to generate a good income, it's difficult because if you can't spend as much time out on the water to produce good pearls, means that you won't be getting a lot of good pearls in return. So as we speak today, I think it's only a handful of us left, Manihikans, that are farming in uh, Manihiki. You know, we'd love to see more of our people to go back, because I believe the pearl industry is a vital industry that needs to bring our community back to the island. Otherwise, there's nothing, there's nothing to go back for. I think the challenge that we are facing today is more the awareness side of things. It is important that we reconnect our people to the environment so that they appreciate the environment because we, uh, small island nations, are at the forefront of the impacts of climate change. Although us Pacific nations may be small, as a whole we definitely cover a wide area across the world and if nothing was to change, if we weren't going to do anything about our habits, our lifestyle, we could lose our Pacific nations in the blink of an eye. And we really need to start making these changes now to ensure that you know, we look after our Pacific nations, our Pacific people, and preserve our special environment that we have here in the world. <laughs>